QuickBooks Online 2024 Pay Employees. Get ready and some coffee because we're sketching out the bookkeeping process outline with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know. That CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. You know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left-hand side in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on the balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Same with the profit and loss. Right-click, open link in a new tab. One more time, ultra vase again. Right click, open link in a new tab. If you don't have that trial balance in the favorites, you can search for it up top. We're going to tab to the right, close up the hamburger, and then do a range change going from 0101 uh, to 4 tab, 0131 to 4 tab, and then we will run. And then we'll tab to the right, closing the hamburger and scrolling up and doing a range change again. 0101 to 4 tab, 0131 to 4 tab. And then we will run again. And then we'll tab to the right and close up the hamburger and do another range change. 010124 tab, 013124. And then we'll refresh. Refreshing. All right, let's go back to the balance sheet here. And now we're going to be thinking about processing the payroll. Remembering that payroll is a, a whole issue in and of itself and every time i touch on payroll i just want to remind ourselves that there's multiple different options for payroll and typically it's going to cost more no matter what option that you choose you could try to run payroll by the way just like in excel spreadsheets and not purchase or have an upsell of payroll in some way shape or form but i do not recommend that even if you only have a few employees because just the bookkeeping for payroll is complicated and then when you put on top of that the reporting requirements to make sure that you're in compliance, that's complicated. And also there could be like human resources stuff that's kind of tied to the employees as well, which all adds a level of complication. Noting that no one thing is complicated at pay, as, as payroll. You might think, well, you know, Social Security is easy to calculate. Medicare is easy to calculate. So it's all easy to do. But when you put them all together, then it becomes complicated because now you've just got a whole bunch of stuff that you got to keep track of and you can tell it's complicated because if you look at all the massive number of reports that are going to be payroll reports that you have to use to then populate your 941s, your 940, your W2s and your W3 and have all the pay stubs and stuff, it's a, it's a lot pretty detailed amount of the report. So what are your options with payroll? You could upsell on payroll mean you purchase payroll within quickbooks so that you can process it in quickbooks quickbooks providing you some help and some support to get the calculations right and then process the forms 941s 940 and uh, the w2s and w3s and so on uh, or you can have a third-party payroll provider that does all that stuff externally 
And that could be a useful system because you might even be able to remain on a cash-based system within QuickBooks, let them do all the payroll processing, and just process the paychecks as they come through the QuickBooks system, and then do periodic adjustments at the end of the year, working with yourself as the bookkeeper, the payroll uh, provider to do the payroll and human resources possibly, and then your CPA, tax preparer, or accountant to do the period end adjustments with the help and use of the payroll forms from the payroll provider so that we can just do adjustments to make the financial statements right at the end of the year would be a general idea that might work. Okay, so note also with the payroll, if I select the drop down here, that payroll is only complicated because of laws and regulations around it. Note that yeah, it, it, payroll should be basically just like paying another vendor, meaning if you didn't have all the laws and regulations with withholdings, at, like in the United States, then it would just be you'd shake hands with your payroll provider. You'd say, well, what did we agree on? And then I'll pay you at the end of the week. And then you just pay him at the end of the week with an expense form. It'd be easy. But we have a lot of laws and regulations in part where the government wants to make the employer the collection agency for the taxes. So that means that we are now we have now been made into the tax collection arm for our employees and we have to record the withholdings. Also note uh, that with payroll, it's a law and therefore the laws will change from location to location. So if you're in another country, the, the accounting system, double entry accounting system, that's universal. That's like math. It's the same, it just has different currency. But laws will change, and with bookkeeping, the major impact on bookkeeping by laws are the taxes. There's no new tax under the sun. We, it's just a combination of taxes. They're just taking what things that people have come up with with different tax, and they're just applying a different combination of them. So you just got to figure out what the taxes are and how to apply it. The United States has a pretty complex payroll tax system combined with the income tax system. And so that's why it gets a little bit messy because we have federal income tax, Social Security and Medicare for two kinds of taxes for the, on the federal side. And then on the state side, you could also have state taxes and withholdings depending on the location on the state, which will differ from state to state. So quick recap down here. This is the flowchart from the desktop version, but we're using it for the online just to remember the forms and the processes that happen. So we set up payroll before, and now once it's set up, we can just do the normal cycle. We're going to run the cycle around whatever cycle we set up, meaning weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. We set ours up to be monthly. We might have to enter time. However, the time entry here in QuickBooks isn't always just used to process payroll because you might enter time uh, on a job cost system to bill the clients or invoice the clients based on time, such as done in a law firm or CPA firm. People do work, at, give you the timesheet, you bill or the invoice the client based on it. Uh, but if they're hourly workers, you could use the time entry to then process the payroll or you can just have them fill out some other time thing, whatever you wanna do, if you wanna do an Excel worksheet or whatever other software. But, but if they're hourly workers, you will need the time to process the payroll. Now we're at the step where we're going to process the payroll. We set up the payroll, we have the information. Now we're gonna process the payroll, which will be done weekly, semi-weekly, uh, or, uh, or uh, bi-weekly or uh, monthly, for us monthly. When we process the payroll, we will generate the paychecks or more likely electronic transfer checks these, these days, direct deposit type of checks. Uh, but when that happens, it becomes the mo more complicated because there will also be withholdings involved in it, meaning they will earn so much money, the expenses, and then we will take their own money from them like they're a baby and pay their expenses for them because the government forces us to treat them that way. And I think it's a bit demeaning myself. They can pay their own taxes. I don't need to take it out of their check before they get it. But that's that's the government for you. That's how they do things these days. So and then you have to, our our side of it as too for the employer portion of the payroll taxes. And then later we'll have to pay the liabilities that we withheld on their behalf and our taxes. And we're going to have to then process the payroll forms 
which is typically quarterly 941 forms, yearly 940 forms, the W-2s, the W-3s, and uh, so on. So we're on the processing of the payroll step at this point. So let's go back to the first tab. Now we set up the payroll over here just for the practice problem. We have a whole nother course on uh, payroll course or section on payroll that goes into it a little bit more detail. If you wanna get into the details of it, we'll just give the general uh, idea of it here. So we have in the overview, we've got the pay my team under the employees section. We can also run payroll uh, within here. It might be a little bit easier to do it, you know, within here because you can see our two employees. We set up the two employees and now let's go ahead and run the payroll. As of uh, 131, it says, so notice the pay periods. This is one of the difficult things about payroll to do a practice problem with because it has to run real time, basically. So you only have so many payroll periods when you set up uh, the company file and you, and you kind of have to process it real time but the payroll is drastically different from the first quarter to the last quarter in due part in, due in part two, the, the caps and stuff that are on the payroll, such as social security has a cap and same with federal unemployment tax. So just something to keep aware of, but we're gonna process it as of 131.24, add employees. No, it gives us the summary here, which will be great if we have all the information in there to process it. But I'm gonna go into each one of these. We're gonna to have to make a slight adjustment to them to tie into our worksheet. And uh, I just wanna show you what is happening with the payroll. So if everything was set up and everyone, then it would process perfectly from here. And hopefully you can just double check it here and preview the payroll and then process it. But I'm gonna edit each of these. So let's go in and go do 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 edit paycheck so we can see the detail of what is happening. Now, let me go into an Excel worksheet just to see it in Excel. If you had an external payroll provider do your payroll, like an ADP or paychecks, they would provide you a much more detailed form, but would look somewhat like this. This would be like a payroll register. So now we're going to say Adam Hamilton and Erica. So let's say Adam, we said that they had 55,000 yearly salary. We're going to pay him monthly. So divided by 12, and that comes out to four, five, eight, three, thirty-three, and then the social security is basically a flat tax, meaning it's going to take whatever the total earnings are and multiply it times a flat rate, which is easy to do. The flat tax is nice and easy, and obviously, as people earn more money, the tax goes up. That's a little bit different than the income tax, which is a progressive tax, which means it goes up even more because the tax rate actually goes up as income goes up. However, it's not a perfect flat tax because there's a cap on it. If you go up above a certain amount, you no longer pay the tax. So it gets messy there. And that's why if you don't catch that, it'll cause a problem because if someone earns a high amount of income, they no longer pay taxes after a certain point. You might say, that's not fair, that's weird. It looks like a benefit to the rich. But notice what is happening here. Social security these days has become more of a, like a, a statewide or, or a federal uh, retirement plan instead of like a safety net. So instead of having social security only for those who were not able to save for retirement on their own, it's become something that, that is like part of retirement for everyone. So, so if you think about it like that, and what happens is when you get paid out at, at uh, retirement, then it's based on how much you earn. So the payments actually go down as you earn more money. But as you go past a certain dollar amount, then you don't get any more benefit for the money going back to you at the end. So it's kind of a messy situation with the social security because it, it used to be thought of as a safety net and now it's thought of as like a like a retirement plan and if it was a retirement plan you would think that you would get the money back that you put into it and so in any case i'm not trying to argue one way or the other it's just that's the way it is right now social security is a mess don't depend on it yourself because it's already there's nothing in it right now in the bank account what's going into it right now is paying the current generation's uh, taxes and it looks like kind of like a ponzi scheme at this point because the, it, as the as the population changes, then then you would think there might not be enough to pay. They're gonna have to reformat. You would think social security at some point, but whatever. That's how it is. Medicare. 
Uh, this one is thought of more as a, as a safety net program, and you can tell by the, the rate, which is 1.45% of, but it's more of a flat tax. It's not a perfect flat tax because if you go over a certain amount, you might have to pay, you know, there, there might be an added amount or whatever. But that one looks more like a safety net kind of uh, uh, system that people would only have it if they need it, right, in uh, retirement and therefore the tax is, you know, smaller. So then if we add those together, then, oh, this is the, this is the income tax. Now, this is the federal income tax, not ours as the, as the business owner, but that of the employee. So Adam needs to pay his own taxes, but the government thinks he's a baby. So we can't give him the money and, and rely on him to pay the taxes. We have to take it out for him. It's not an option. It's not like we're doing Adam a favor. We're required to do so. I'd be okay with it if Adam was like, if we can if we can do Adam a favor by it, but it's mandatory, which it's which makes it kind of, I don't like that uh, personally, but whatever, that's how it is. So this one, we have to get the information from the W-4. Now I just made up a number here. This is the more most complex one because the income tax is very difficult. It's not a flat tax to calculate. It's based on a whole bunch of different things. Your filing status, you know, and your dependents and so on. So that means the net pay is going to be this. So here's going to be his total earnings. And then we have to pay, we have to take, we have to take out his social security, Medicare and income for him. And then the net pay then that he's going to get is going to be the three, five, seven, two, seventy, And this is going to be the liability that we'll have to pay at a future time. Then on top of that, we're going to have to pay social security and Medicare on our portion on top. So this is our portion of social security, Medicare, our tax, our payroll tax. And this is not based on our income. It's based on our employees income. So, so that it's kind of a matching kind of concept. So it's the same amount here and here. And then Erica, we're going to say earns uh, 2,400. I'm not sure exactly. And that was, but we're going to take out social security, same concept we'll, we'll, where we will take 6.2% of that. And then the Medicare, we're going to take 0.0145 of that. And then we just made up the income tax. We're imagining it was 360 because that's what she told us on the W-4, which hopefully we could have emailed to her, our employees. And then they, and then we're less liable. You know, they fill it out themselves, right? Which is nice. And then we're going to say 2,400 minus the Social Security, Medicare, and income tax. This is the net check that she will get. She earned that. But we're not going to give her that because we have to we have to do take out her taxes for her, not because she requested us to do so, which then I would be fine to do as a favor, but because it's mandatory. And so it's a compulsory thing. And then we also have to pay our uh, employer portion on top of that. Now, you can think of our employees as one whole like one employee. So if I was to enter this in not using QuickBooks payroll, but rather someone else ADP or paychecks did it, for example, then we could enter it in our system as just a journal entry if we wanted to do that. Although we got to make sure that we still reconcile the checking account. All right. So that's the general idea. So I'm just going to adjust now the taxes over here to coincide with our worksheet because I, because I, because I have to do that. <laughs> so here's the salary. So here it is here. That's how much uh, Adam earned. And then we're not going to have any overtime. So this is going to be the total earnings. And then these are the employee taxes. So the taxes that are coming out of, or in theory paid by the employee. So we have the federal income tax. So we're going to say, I need to change this. I'm going to say it's going to be uh, 660.01. Why did I need to change that? because uh, we didn't put anything in the W-4 form and it based that number on the W-4 form. And, I, and so we're not gonna get into the detail of the W-4 form, it's not a flat tax. We cannot change these two. Notice it doesn't even let you Social Security and Medicare because those are based on the rate and, and basically you know it is what it is. So, and then we've got the California tax. I'm gonna say it's zero because I don't wanna make it a state-based tax right here. I'm ignoring the states taxes state taxes will change from place to place and i'm trying to make it a generic problem and then it puts 50 dollars, and i can't get rid of the state uh, disability which is annoying because that's a state tax 
So let's, let's actually change this one. I'm going to change the federal income tax to 609.59. And so then I'll get to the same net check. I'm trying to get a net check that ties out to what I have in uh, when we do the bank reconciliations is what I'm doing here. So that means that the total here, if we were to add those up, we're at uh, 1010. Zero, zero. Okay. I think that works. And then the employer taxes, we have the federal unemployment, that's the FUTA tax. Now, again, I'd liked, I didn't think it was going to put the FUTA tax. I wish I could remove that for our practice purposes because <laughs> that's usually going to be uh, a lower tax that I didn't really want to deal with and I haven't put in my worksheet. But then we have the Social Security on our side and then the Medicare. So this is an employer only tax, the FUTA tax. It phases out usually after like the first quarter because there's a low cap on it. Okay, so we will deal with that. I think we'll be okay. All right, so if I, if I look at this then, that means that th I'll minimize this. So we had then the check, the total earnings is 4583.33 minus what we're going to take out of the employee's wages, which totals out to minus 1010.64. That comes out to 3572.69. And I wanted it to come out to uh, 3572.70. So it's off by rounding. It's just a rounding difference. So what if I, uh, this needs to be, this needs to be, do, 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 do. Uh, uh, that's fine. Okay, I'm okay with that. My bank reconciliation will be a penny off on that check. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Let's save it. And let's see, let's check out Erica's. So let's go into Erica's and see if I can, well, we can put the hours in here, which I'm going to say is 150. Let's put them here, 150 hours. So that comes out to our 2,400. And let's edit Erica's paycheck now. Now Erica, Erica only works like sometimes because she's a she's a mother and what she's taking care of. So you know we got any case. <laughs> so we got the regular pay here, and then we've got the overtime pay. Okay, so two thousand four hundred. That is good. And then down here we've got uh, uh, the the federal income tax. We're gonna say. Uh, so is going to be, I'm going to make it 360. So I have to change that to 360.01 is what we had. And then, but there's still a state disability. So let's do it this way. Let's pull out the trustee calculator and I'm going to make it 360.01 minus the 26.4 gives us the 333.61. 333.61. Okay. And then We've got the Social Security, which is is the is this times point uh, or six point five percent, and the Medicare, which is a flat tax, and then we've got the California tax. I'm going to remove it. That would be the state tax, also coming from basically the W four, and then we have the twenty six. So we have this amount at then the five forty three sixty. I have sixty, and I have sixty one over here, so it's off by a penny again. Ah, oh, but the net check would be 2400 uh, minus the 333.61 minus the 148.8 minus 34.8 minus 26.4 would be 185639. And again, it's a penny off. I have 40. I'm okay with that. My paychecks are going to be off by a penny. I'll deal with that in the bank reconciliation. I won't struggle with it here anymore. And then down here, we've got the employer portion, FUTA, federal unemployment tax, same thing, social security matching. Notice that FUTA is an employer only tax that's not paid by the employee at all. Social security, Medicare, and those tie out to what I had over here so that we should be okay with that. All right, let's save it. Save it. I think we're okay. I think we can process it. Now, payroll is something that you want to typically get right the first time and not uh, not have a tinkering system because if you have to fix payroll, 
you basically have to void the check typically you can't just change the check like we saw before if like if your expense form was off or something sometimes you can change the expense form although you want to be careful with that too but payroll's messier so it's usually better to check twice uh, measure twice and cut once preview the payroll here is our preview uh total seven seven uh that's the total does that match what i have over here oh i see what they did they took all plus the liability but this this is the gross pay and the employee and the employer taxes which i'm going to have to possibly make a little bit of an adjustment to because of those state taxes okay but that's we can do that and then the funding account is going to be here we're going to just take it out of the checking account a lot of times people make a separate uh, payroll account because that way you get to see all the payroll detail in one place to do that though what you would need to do is see how much you need to transfer to the payroll account and then transfer this amount into the payroll account and then pay your payroll out of the payroll account so you're using a checking account like a clearing account and you might say well that's an added step why would i do that well because payroll is complicated and it's easier if you run into a problem to have all your paychecks just going in and out of one account that makes it a little bit simpler more simple than trying to look through all the register information from a from a bunch of accounts and it's pretty easy to do these days given the fact that we have online banking and whatnot but in any case here's the date we're going to say that's good so preview payroll details let's take a look at that so you've got a kind of register that we've similar to the register we had here right and so now we've got the the salary hours the amount the uh employee taxes federal social security medicare duh, duh, for erica too and then uh the the net pay and the totals notice how we can we can kind of combine the two people together in some ways again to see like the total as if they're one employee we might talk about that more in a second but there's that okay i'm okay with that how do i get out of here i just x out of here i believe so we'll just close that out and then submit we can we can submit or save for later i'm gonna do it now i feel it's risky i'm gonna do it though okay so then we need our check numbers i think we're on 1012 well let's let it do an autofill i'll let it do the autofill uh okay well uh, i'll go 1012 and then 1013 i think those are the two checks yeah okay so download payroll reports so run payroll payroll is done two checks uh print the stubs let's check out the stubs and so these are the pay stubs note that although you do this electronically oftentimes you still need to give the pay stubs and you're probably familiar with the look of the pay stubs that gives you both the current period as well as the year to date they're the same right now because it's the first payroll but they will not always be the same and that adds a significant level of detail to the information we have to give because we have to see the accumulated earnings here as well so you can see down here we've got the social security uh the california tax the medicare and the federal income tax that was taken out here's the total pay here's the taxes and there's the net pay for both of the employees okay that's good so we're gonna say that's done then so let's go ahead and say close it take payroll off the list auto payroll is included at no extra cost with your quickbooks payroll plan so you can stay in control so select which eligible employees you want to pay automatically so you could possibly set up the payroll because it's a reoccurring thing to be automatic which would be great uh, but we'll not get into it right now so i'm not going to do the auto setup we're going to say close that we'll deal with that later and then let's go into our registered let's go into the transactions and then let's go into our checking account and check out the check register close up the ham boogie and so there's our two checks notice they're paychecks now so you can see they're specially indicated as paychecks if i go into them and edit them then it's going to go into a, a separate different window than we're used to from a normal check let's go back let's go to the reports see what's impacted here run the report so what happened 
Uh, well, you would think the first thing that would come to mind is the checking account went down, of course. Going to the checking account, uh, it went down to, to by our paychecks. It's indicating a new check. It's just the same as a normal check, except like the bill check, it's now a payroll check. So there it is, the, the 3572 and so on. If I go into it and drill down to the source document, it, it's it's going to be diff. It won't even let me drill down to the source document. So we can do that on the register, but the paychecks have a different a different thing to it, a different, more complicated form. And if you needed to uh, change it again, you'd have to void the check generally. So let's go back now. The other side, if I compare this, by the way, to my register, right? So that the the net check is what we just saw, and those two. And then if I go to my profit and loss, we can see that we have the wages here. So if I go into the wages, then we have our two wages. This is the gross pay. So this is going to be more than this is what they earned. This is what they got. The difference is what they what we withheld from them. And so if I go back, where would that difference be? It's back on the balance sheet. And it's a liability account. So we have a liability account for the, the, the sales tax. So here we've, we've got the California tax that we owe to the California because we had to do that. And then the federal taxes that we owe to the government. This will include both the employee and employer portion. The amount that we took from the employees that we have to pay on their behalf to the government as well as our portion. So if I go back to the profit and loss, this in this area, this is our portion, the 813 that we matched with the Social Security and Medicare. Now, because the state taxes uh, kind of threw us off there, uh, we have a, a bit of a difference in the taxes. So let me check this out. Where did that go? Now, note, I'm on the income statement. These state, The state taxes, we didn't want the state taxes over here because... I wanted to make this a generic problem, but I couldn't get rid of the state taxes because I said it was in California. And I also wanted to remove the federal income tax for our practice problem purposes. So what I'm going to, I'm going to do a journal entry just so we can tie this out and match it uh, to what is in our practice problem worksheet. So everything works going forward uh, due to that California and the federal unemployment that I couldn't remove. So I'm just going to go over here and say, okay, this this uh, 813.56 should be, uh, I'm going to say it should be 474.23 according to our worksheet because of those items. We we're, we're have a difference of 33933. I'm going to make a journal entry that'll be, I'm just going to make a sub account so we can see what the system came to and then our adjustment to adjust for those California and FUTA components. So I'm going to go back on over here and then also I need to, I'm going to, adjust for th this California tax here and here by again making another account which will be a subordinate uh, to the payroll liability. So I'll show you how to do that here. This this is just for our practice problem purposes. Let's select the drop down and I'm going to say that I'm just going to do a journal entry. So I want to say drop down. We just want a normal journal entry. Let's see. Actually that's the wrong drop down. Sorry about that. I'm over here the new. I was like, where's the journal entry? Journal entry. Okay. So now I'm going to make this as of 01324. Uh, and I'm going to say that that the do, 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 what did we call it? I'm going to call it a payroll 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 tax uh, adjustment account ADJ I'll just say I'm going to add it it's going to be an expense type of account and it's going to be I'll just call it another or other miscellaneous payroll tax it's going to be a sub account I'm going to make of the payroll of the payroll tax so I'm going to put it a sub account of the tax account so we're going to say okay so there it is and then I'll make that is going to be a credit of 339.33. And then I'm going to make another one, which is going to be 
payroll liability adjustment account. And this is going to be an other, an other current liability. What, what did I do? Other current liability. And this is going to be other current liability payroll adjustment. And I'm going to make it a sub account of the payroll liabilities. So I can see this adjustment, which is just for internal use purposes. So I'm going to save that and it will be a debit. So I think that works. So this is, I apologize for having to do this, but this is just our workaround to deal with the widget of payroll that we use so that we can then tie in to the numbers we've already pre-composed so that we can tie out to the bank reconciliation. All right, let's save and close that and I'll see, we'll check that out. We're gonna go into our balance sheet and then if I run this, run it again, we can see now we've got to do, 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 do. So we kept everything here that was there before and then I reduced it by the 33931 to get to the 202, the 2011, which is what I have in my worksheet. Well, actually, it's 202848. So it's off, it's actually still off by a couple pennies, but I'm okay with that. And then on the profit and loss, we're gonna, if I run that again, we can scroll down and we can say here is our payroll taxes. That's what it calculated because it included the the California and the federal unemployment tax. And then I brought it down to here to tie into what we have in our worksheet. Okay. Okay. So note also that you, you're going to have payroll tax forms now, which will tie out to this information. So if I tab to the right, right click and duplicate another tab, then I can open up our payroll tax forms on the left hand side under, duh, 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 under reports and then close up and then we can scroll down and we can look at all the payroll forms that are towards the bottom. So you got the employee forms, uh, which is the recent added, the time activities. But if I scroll down to here, then you have payroll, which is a whole nother area. So you've got all these forms, contractor payments, employee detail, employee directory, uh, FFCRA CARES Act, because that's another thing that could have impacts on the payroll. Uh, multiple worksheets, paycheck history, payroll billing summary, summary, payroll deductions calculations, payroll detail, payroll items, the, uh, the payroll summary by employee, and the payroll summary. So let's take a look at the summary by employee, right click and open that one. And I'm looking for one, I like to see one that, that looks kind of like our register over here that gives us uh, the information. Some of these will have, you know, duplicate information that's basically formatted in a different fashion. But here's going to be the summary that was broken out. So you've got the total hours, the regular pay, uh, the salary, here's the gross pay, it looks somewhat like what would be reported on the paycheck. We've got uh, the regular, uh, the regular pay, and then the salary, and then the adjusted gross. And then we have the employees taxes and deductions that were removed. Here are the employee taxes broken out, the federal social security, Medicare, and then the state taxes. And there is uh, the net pay. Now this is the total. Now I like, I like the format of this because now it shows you the two employees and then it combines them together. So note, this would be a report, something like what you would get if you, uh, had an external person doing the payroll at like an ADP or a paychecks, then they would provide you with this report, which you could enter into the system as though they were one big employee, right? Instead of entering two employees, I can enter it as one big journal entry, not so I can process the payroll to give the information to the employees because the external provider would do that, but rather just so I can get my financial statements correct. Or you can provide this report to the tax preparer at the end of the year and simply on our side, possibly just record it on a cash based system so that we just record the net checks as they come through and just record them to one account and then say, okay, CPA firm at the end of the year, take this type of report and 
make our financial statements correct on whatever basis is necessary for tax preparation and external financial reporting. See, so you could see how, how much added detail is inside. Like if you did that, if, if, you, if you had an external person doing the payroll reporting, all this added detail you wouldn't really need in the financial statements because it's not really necessary to get the end result of the financial statements, balance sheet income statement reported correctly. It's there to coincide with all the requirements that are specific to payroll, which is to have the paycheck stubs broken out year to date and paycheck by paycheck and to get the 941s to 940s, W2s and W3s all lined up and you know supported. So you get all these other, so again, you have all these other reports uh, that we saw here to to deal with that. And we have a whole nother, you know, course or section to dive into more details on payroll. This is just a very basic payroll with two employees. And we didn't do a lot of stuff with with different withholdings or state uh, state items or anything like that as well. And you can see on the balance sheet and the income statement, when we drill down on these accounts, it's getting quite cumbersome as well. If I drill down on any of these accounts, you're starting to get a lot of detail within these accounts because it's trying to break out all the different types of taxes instead of what you really need to re report for external reporting, which is just like this payroll tax liability. You know, it would just be that's all you really need on the financial statements to do your taxes or for external reporting. But to get all the details right, of course, if you're processing within QuickBooks, you need all that added detail to, to coincide with all the other regulations with regards to payroll. All right, so I hope I got we got that uh, in there uh, well <laughs> and correctly. Let's go to the trial balance now and just see where we stand at this point. Uh, I removed the trial balance. Did I remove the trial? No, here it is. Let's run the trial balance. This is the balance sheet on top of the income statement. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If they don't, try changing the date. It might be a date range issue, and then you can check it out then. We got the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with the assets. Checking accounts and asset, accounts receivables and asset, inventories and asset, investments and asset, uh, payments to deposit is an asset, accumulated depreciation contra asset connected to the property, plants and equipment or furniture and fixture. The prepaid insurance is an asset. Then we have the liabilities. These who are who have claim to the assets. It's kind of the other side of the coin. Accounts payable, our vendors, the bank, Visa, the government in terms of sales tax in the United States, that's state and local government claims. And then the loan payable, that's the bank. And then we have the payroll taxes. Now these are claimed, this is money that we owe to the government again for the payroll taxes. And then we have our claim to the assets of the business in equity, opening balance equity, owner's investment, owner's uh, equity. And then we have the income statement, which is starting to get quite long, but we can still scrunch down to just one number as part of the equity section. So now we have our income, which is uh, 46877 plus 5180 minus 37242 minus the 813.56 plus this adjustment we made 339.33 minus 6983.33 uh, minus 500 minus 410 minus 620. Does that match what's on the profit and loss? Uh, it should. Uh, it's going to be 587244. It does. And then if we scrunch that number plus what's in the owner's equity plus uh, 77896, we get to 83723, which is if I go one day up, go to the 25th, 010125 then it'll roll into equity. So 8, 3, 7, 23, 44. There we have it.